Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So, how do you spot an activist judge? A judge that doesn't care about Supreme Court president, a judge that doesn't care about the Constitution or the law, but a judge that cares more about an agenda? Well, you simply just look at what they say. Case in point, district judge in Illinois just said that semi-automatic rifles with detachable magazines are not protected by the Second Amendment. So let's talk about it. This channel is proud to be sponsored by the USCCA. I've been a member myself for the past six years, long before I ever had a relationship with those guys. And I got to tell you, it's the best membership you could ever have in your wallet. It's the best peace of mind that you'll ever have, knowing that if something happens and you have to defend yourself, you are covered. Now, don't forget, February is almost over. And if you want to get this cleaning kit right here, you sign up for any membership level, you can get this cleaning kit for free. Sign up for the elite or platinum levels and get this big ass range bag right here so this is again for the uh, platinum and elite members so check out the link below sign up for the uscca 100 percent money back guarantee it's worth it check it out so i'm sure by now you're all aware of the so-called assault weapons ban in the state of illinois that was one of many that we saw last year well after that ban was passed there were multiple lawsuits that were filed one that challenged that law was Beavis v. Naperville. Now, that went before a district court judge, and the district court judge took a look at everything. They, she says she also considered Bruin and text, history, and tradition, and decided that, well, no, she's going to go ahead and uphold the ban in her order because she thinks that so-called assault weapons are dangerous and unusual, and therefore we have a history and tradition of regulating such items saying this quote the text of the second amendment is limited to only certain arms and history and tradition demonstrate that particularly dangerous weapons are unprotected end quote so the judge in this case issued an order that upheld the state and county laws basically saying that again if they're dangerous and unusual in her eyes and therefore they are open for regulation. Now let's consider dangerous and unusual. What makes them dangerous to her? Well, what makes them dangerous to her clearly is the name. It is a term that was made up by government to make something sound worse than it actually is. What it actually is, is a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with the ability to accept a detachable magazine. That is what they do not like. It's no different than any other semi-automatic, whether it has a wood stock or a plastic stock, or if it's black or if it's brown or whatever it is. It's no different than any other model that does the same thing. But because they gave it that moniker, it makes it something else in an activist's mind. So they think of it in completely different context than something else that does the same thing but just simply looks different. The term assault weapon, again, is a made up term in general. So the fact that she's using this term as a, a legal standing already shows you that she's an activist and doesn't understand what she's actually talking about or just doesn't care. Now, thankfully, this is just a district court judge, so this can and will be appealed up to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, and I don't think the Seventh Circuit's gonna have any other choice but to follow Supreme Court precedent and the roadmap that was laid out by Justice Thomas on how to look at cases like this and, and what actually needs to happen so that we avoid having instances where activist judges make uh, decisions based on feelings. I think that this, the Seventh Circuit is going to have to overturn the lower court's order here. So either way, there's multiple lawsuits. Each one kind of takes a different direction. And I think that Illinois is eventually going to see this be overturned. But still, the fact that we have judges like this out there is kind of a scary thought where they put their own personal thoughts, emotions, and feelings, and opinions in front of actual law and precedent. I mean, the Supreme Court, you know, has said that you have to look at text history and tradition. But if you skew that in your own mind, you can come up with whatever you want. The only thing is, is that the plain text of the Second Amendment is very clear. It's very clear. It's concise. People may say because there's a comma and because it talks about the militia and it talks about, you know, different things like that, that it can be somewhat confusing. It's not. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. That's the end of the story right there. But still, people tend to ignore that. So that's what we end up with. And I wanted to let you guys know about that because... As ridiculous as it is, it's still something to consider coming from a district court judge. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.